What's up everybody? Uh, back in here Monday and uh, I've already been working most of the day. It's a little after one. Um, I got the Bronco tailgate and spare tire holder all put back together. Uh, talked with him over the weekend and it looks like we, I am going to be painting it all over um, when I can uh, get it in after I get a, a few uh, knocked out and out of here to uh, be able to be able to have this one inside and work on it and not uh, not having to be moving it in and out all the time because the shop's full right now but uh, i'm going to turn it around here and uh, show you what the what it looks like uh now so here it is uh as i think i mentioned in uh, the last video of the uh swell nuts hex swell nuts that are wasn't in the new tailgate um other than that uh, everything should be should be back together uh when it comes back and i go to paint the rest of it uh i'll take care of these bolts uh didn't see any sense in in painting them uh making them look good if i'm going to be taking them right back off so yeah other than that uh turned out pretty good put his stickers on um the license plate, uh, the light, uh, he's gonna get a new one of them. Uh, the one that was in it is uh, real old and rusty looking. Uh, he's got a new uh, rubber piece that goes on the back window. Um, he's got it coming. And uh, yeah, yeah, other than that, it's, uh, it's as ready, ready to be picked up until he's ready to get it painted and bring it back and we'll start working on getting it all all nice and shiny other than just the tailgate but uh how to do it i'm gonna pull it out and start on something else okay i pulled the grand cherokee over here uh the owner is going to be picking it up later this evening i took yesterday evening and washed it real good but uh you can see it Turned out real nice. The blend turned out nice. Good match on it now. Everything looks looks real good now. She should be happy with this. She'd probably be glad to have it back because it's been it's been parked for a while where it's been uh, been hit and. Uh, had an estimate road on it and uh, ended up didn't that shop didn't fix it uh, So it has sat for a while being wrecked. So I'm sure she's gonna be happy to have it back But it is all done and ready to go All right, I got uh, I got the Nova all blocked down with the 150 as you can see here in the door areas uh, this is one reason why I wanted to mount the fenders um, to the door mount the fender so uh, you could block it to the door so when it's painted they look right uh, it's kind of got a big gap here which can't really tighten it up too much it's just I'm not used to uh, used to this big of a gap but if I tighten it up a little bit more uh, it's gonna hit in places so but uh, yeah for the amount of work Body work that I did on it. There's only a few low spots, um, you know, the where the patch panels was at, uh, blocked out real nice. Um, this side was the worst as far as had to do filler work. There's a tiny low spot there, little low spot there, low here. Uh, kind of. I'm not sure if this is all from uh, previous damage or if it's a. Uh, you know kind of what the fact how it came from from the factory i'm not real sure on this old stuff like this uh, if it was a fox body i'd be able to tell you but uh it's not going to take much uh i may uh, go on the inside of the door hammer and dolly it a little bit out a little bit don't want to mess it up too much uh but other than that it's uh blocked out real nice this is about the worst area uh had a little bit too much filler. Um, actually, the fender was out really far. Uh, hit it with a 
block and a wood to get it to closer to the door. Uh, I remember when I was stripping this thing, they had a lot of filler in this area here. So uh, it's not going to take too much. I know it, it looks like, I mean, it is low here, but it's not too awful low. It's a, uh, it's pretty close. But I uh, work that, I uh, work these couple low spots here on the top of the fender. But yeah, other than that, it's uh, it's pretty good, pretty close. Uh, this is, I blocked it all with 150. If you remember, this is the first coat, first, um, I actually put two coats, but I'm gonna say first, uh, what should I say, not, I wanna say it's the first coat of primer but I actually, when I put it on, I put two coats. But uh, first primer session, I guess is what I'm gonna say. Uh, after I did all the body work, uh, after the um, primer, uh, epoxy primer was put on, this is the first session of 2K high build primer that's on it, I'll, I'll just say that. And then um, this is one, blocked with 150. Once I fix these low spots, I'll get it back in there in the booth block it i mean not block it uh primer it again with some 2k high build primer and then it'll be ready to block i would probably block it with 32400 uh after the second priming but being this car is going to go black and it's older car and i kind of want it to be you know pretty pretty slick i had a lot of a lot of work done to it um i'm going to block the second a session of primer with 220 and then I'll primer it again and then I'll block it with 32400 um, then it'll be ready to paint so that's where we're at on it and I'm gonna get to doing these low spots and filler work and uh, I may try and get Chase to sand it I don't know are you gonna sand it for me huh I don't think he's going to sand it for me so I'll end up having to sand it and prime it and do it all over again. The blocking is the worst part on these old cars like this. So so time consuming and um, it wears you out too. Worst part of body work. Okay, uh, Thursday morning, I got the Nova over in the booth. It's all blocked, I've been uh, Working on taping it up yesterday after I got it uh, after I got it ready and uh, Brad was over here yesterday working on the uh, coyote swap car and uh, I'll show you what uh, he's got done with it and he'll be back uh, he'll be back today and uh, do some more more on it so this is so this is what he's got done so far he uh, fabbed up the lower uh radiator hose uh solid um pipe uh got it uh welded up and the hose is fitting uh got the fan shroud in uh mounted up to the radiator with the fan uh i didn't mention but uh, uh all the parts has came in for it so uh been getting getting everything on it uh you can see just how close the fan shroud is to the um turbo now if this car didn't have ac or abs it would be things would be a, a, a lot easier to uh to mount everything it having ac without i think i've talked about this before but without recessing the radiator in have to move the condenser outside of the uh other outside of the radiator support cutting the the lower support out putting a tubular one in so the ra uh, factory radiator sits under this uh, support you even have to cut out the underneath of it to sit it where it needs and then have to get uh, custom lines and stuff made uh, to keep it where it's sitting using the factory uh, mounting and then uh, got an aftermarket uh, fan shroud with a, a aftermarket fan um, it's real close down to the abs module down there but it's got uh it's still got good clearance you can you can kind of see um it is the 
fan shroud is moved over as far as it can go on the radiator to clear that ABS. If the ABS wasn't there, the fan shroud could be moved over some more and get more clearance. But the uh, the actual flange of the uh, uh, turbo is touching the fan shroud. So all we're gonna do, this fan is, uh, is really thick, it really, if it had uh, one of them uh, fans that gradually comes up to the motor, uh, it probably would have would have been okay. But we wanted to make sure the fan um, put out enough uh, CFM to cool the car down. So what we're going to do is uh, it's real thick until it, before it gets down to the blades. We're going to clearance it just a little bit because he's going to run a turbo blanket. And then after after we clearance it, it's going to put some... Uh, heat shield against the fan that way it don't try it the turbo don't try and melt anything with the blanket and the heat shield on the fan shouldn't have any issues uh he got the the billet adapter for the radiator hose upper radiator hose uh he's going to get a a, a a small bend uh rubber hose to uh fit into there um I'm trying to see what else he's doing. Uh, I think that's just about it for now. Uh, we kind of sat the exhaust up and uh, you can kind of see the small area we're working with to uh, shoot the exhaust down through. It's a uh, it's going to have to fit right right in this area to keep it away from the fan as much as possible and um, well, as you can see, just squeeze down through there. It's a three inch pipe, so that's not too bad. If it's four inch, man, it would be, it'd be super close. Um, it's still gonna be close, but this is the down pipe that was sent with the, the car. And uh, from what we were thinking, we're going to uh, bolt it up like this and uh, shorten the bottom up and kick it out right through that hole right there. As you can see, just about how much clearance we've got right there. It's not too much, but it's enough to have good clearance on not melting the fan or anything like that. Shoot it down through there. Then he's, he wanted, well, it's all boxed up. I'll, I'll get that out later. But he's wanting a, uh, a muffler on it. And really the only muffler that uh, we found that would fit. And I'm not sure if it's going to... Uh, not sure if it's going to muffle any sound to it. But the only one that will fit that we found in that area that we're working with is uh, this vibrant. I'm, a, I'm also a dealer for vibrant products. If you need any, just hit me up. It is a stainless steel race muffler. It is uh, five inches long. So it will fit right on the end of that down pipe before it starts coming out the, uh, uh, the, the bumper. Um, not quite sure how much this is gonna change the sound being it's so short. But uh, that's what he, he wanted, and he, not, he wants to try his best to muffle the sound a little bit. He don't want it too loud, so we're going to try try this out. And I'm kind of anxious to see what, what kind of, what it does for the sound. Got a uh, vibrant uh, V-band kit, so be able to take the uh, tip, tip off of... Uh, from the downpipe to when you uh, need to to remove the bumper or something like that, it's a lot easier. Uh, got a lot of wrap to wrap everything. Um, show you the the tip he got. He got the KLM. It's a uh, teardrop three inch teardrop tip 
can't really see it too good in the packaging, but uh, that's going to be coming out the the front bumper like mine. It come with the bezel too, of course. So that should look pretty good. I'm a fan of the teardrop stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's uh that's where we're at on on this thing. Um, there ain't much more to to say about it right now. But that's where we're at on the Coyote Swap New Edge and the Nova's in here. I got quite a bit of it taped up already. Uh, got the fenders back off. Got a, I got the back window, of the trunk taped up. I got this uh, this side, the jam and the windows to tape up, and then of course uh, the down tape it down to the bottom so no overspray gets up under the car on everything. So that's what I'll be doing, and then I'll see you in a little while. All right, Brad, you done yet? Not yet. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, kind of go over what, I guess, what you've been up to. Uh, left off, I did I did video this morning about uh, you were going to have to clearance the fan. Uh, looks like you got it. It clearing pretty good uh, with the blanket, and then you're going to put um, a heat shield on the actual fan itself, right? To yeah, uh, kind of protect it, to make sure it don't want to melt it or anything like that. Yeah, we'll put a small piece of heat shield back behind that there. To just keep from heat being on the fan from melting it if you get in traffic or anything like that. Yeah, I, I kind of showed uh, this morning that you got the lower radiator pipe. Uh, it uh, welded together and ran like uh, like it needs to be. The billet piece on here, you found you a, a hose uh, that'll work here. Just have to go pick it up at the parts store. I showed, uh, I showed the fan had to be pushed fan and shroud had to be pushed to this side to clear the abs stuff uh you got the um i guess you would call it a, a sensor block that you made uh welded it to the fan shroud itself so it could use the uh factory um i guess it'd be a temperature sensor uh that, that way it can control the uh the fan just like a factory right yes yeah that's a It'll be plug. I cut the wire off the factory fan and uh, it'll wire straight up to this fan here. Uh, it, it'll go to the plug just like factory, yeah, factory yeah, it'll, is. It'll plug up to factory and then the factory harness will plug up to the center there. That way the, the computer will uh, control it just like it was a, a factory fan and shroud set up. Yeah, this fan is a. Uh, it's a two-stage fan. It's got high and low on it also, just like a stock one. Yeah, just should, like factory. Should work good. Uh, you also made a bracket for the power steering reservoir here. Uh, it's a aluminum. I'm going to paint it black. That way it don't stand out uh, being raw aluminum like that. Um, yeah, it don't seem like much uh, accomplished, but at, for all the time spending to make that block and the bracket and all like that it it takes uh, it takes time and it adds up quick and you your days uh ran away from you yeah pretty much all day just doing those few things yeah i did also this morning talk about uh uh before you got here uh the way that gonna route the exhaust down towards that uh, kind of small opening un underneath of the abs module yeah, that's about the only clearance that we're going to have is to get it down under there and get the little muffler resonator on there, try to get it in to maybe help muffle the exhaust some a little for it. Yeah, I did uh, I did take it out of the box and everything, uh, videoed that. Uh, yeah, uh, TIG, little TIG welder I bought when I uh, did the stainless exhaust on uh, my Cobra. Uh, it's been working working pretty good for uh first time first time uh using it on aluminum uh so it took a little while to figure out the settings and stuff on it but it's been doing good uh i got the nova in there uh in primer uh i then started to work on the 65 i cut the bottom 
uh, brought it out piece, cut it off, uh, put in the new one. Uh, been working on uh, cutting, trimming, and fitting uh, the wheel well uh, in. So tomorrow I'll start prepping it to uh, to actually weld it in. Uh, I'll tack it in first and then uh, come back up here and get the rest of the old quarter off and fit my new new quarter up. That way it checks the fitment and everything on it. I'd like to get it, it's gonna be quite a bit, but I'd like to get it welded in tomorrow. Uh, that way I can start doing the uh, body work on this thing. I also still have to cut the rust out on the rocker down here and do the patch for it. But uh, yeah, all in all, got quite a bit of stuff accomplished today, I think. Um, most of, a lot of the fab work is, is done on this other than the cold side piping and the uh, exhaust piping. I mean, there ain't, I don't think there's any really, any other fab work as far as getting anything to fit or clearancing, is there, Brad? Uh, most of everything I've done yesterday and today was to clearance for everything for the motor to move forward. Yeah, that move forward. Uh, so now pretty much most of all of that is uh, is clearanced and what it needs to be. I'll have to take a few things back apart to start working on doing the cold side fab work and stuff. And then when I get to cold side, I'll start on the hot side exhaust and get it down. Yeah, and uh, we are changing up the oil drain. Uh, uh, so when he goes to start uh, changing the uh, fitting on the oil pan i'll show you how uh how much better the the tighter uh radius 90 or i guess it'd be shorter shorter 90 uh fitting down there in the oil pan uh makes the oil oil line uh work a whole lot better because uh, if you watch the other video uh the oil line kind of dipped down and then came back up it was going to be trapping oil in there so That'll be took care of. Uh, this side, cold side, is going to take the the longest, I think, and Brad thinks uh, because it's got to make so many twists and turns to come up to the to the turbo here, and uh, there's not much room to to work with. You can kind of see that it has to shoot down this way and then come back and you, underneath of their lower radiator hose down to the uh, cold side pipe into the intercooler down there below. And then a blow off valve also on there. <laughs> yeah, blow off valve's got to go on there too. Which uh, you probably got quite, I think mine is actually yeah, that's here where, too. Yeah, that's where I'll put it at, which I may have to shorten this pipe a little bit and get it a little closer. A little but, tighter. Yeah, but that's where I usually put it at is on that side there. And then I'll have to probably trim the inner, that inner fender well up just a little bit just so it don't get into the blow off valve. Yeah. And I also showed the, he went with the teardrop, uh, three inch teardrop out, gonna be uh, the tip for the exhaust out the bumper on this side. Um, still gonna be a little tight, uh, routing it underneath of the uh, computer over here, clearance in the inner fender well on this side. Uh, but all in all, uh, getting it knocked out, uh, I guess that'd do it for for this video. I'm not sure. Are you gonna be coming back tomorrow to uh, work on it? Yeah, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow to do some more on it. Okay, so so I may uh, I may video after tomorrow and uh, include that uh, that into this one also. So I figured I'd uh, show you in here on the Nova how it's looking with the second uh, second session of primer on it. Looking, looking pretty good, looking pretty straight. I uh, went back and some of the spots that I had to put some more filler, I put a, another, a little bit more of a primer on them than, uh, than everything else. So uh, they kind of got three coats, but uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna try it and uh, leave it taped up and block it in here and that way I can don't have to untape it and um, retape it when I go to put another coat of primer on it because I want to put one more coat of primer on it. I'm gonna block it with the 
220 this time and try and leave it taped up best I can. Then put another coat of primer on it. Then I'll untape it and everything and then it'll be ready to sand uh, for uh, final sand for uh, paint. And then uh, be ready to put some nice shiny black on it. I'll probably end up buffing this whole damn thing too. Just because uh, black will show everything. So I don't know, maybe I can lay it down slick enough where I don't have to buff it. Really just depends on how much trash gets in it, I guess. But all right, that'll do it.